Oh, hi kids. So, I'm using the DSLR to record this. Um, it's a shame I can't zoom in anymore with this lens. I don't really have any macro stuff available, but uh, it looks real cool. I'm going to take a picture um, like this. Uh, I've got the exposure and everything jacked all up so you can sort of see inside uh, the LED while it's doing its thing. Um, Anyway, adding that cap. Now uh, let's put things back to. Um, you're gonna hear lots of clicks while I fuss with the camera and I zoom out and all this fun stuff. All the noises. Okay, cool. So, does autofocus not work? Yeah. Well, that's super sad town. All right. Anyway, so. We've got the um, one right here. Uh, no cap is needed on the first one, it looks like. Added a cap to the second dude. <clears throat> do, 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 do. And no more um, blinky flickering. Just smooth as hell. Everything looks awesome. Um, fun thing. If I jack up the, um, the exposure, uh, but uh, turn everything else down like I did in the beginning, you get to see the frequency that uh, the light is at, operating at. So let's do that real quick. Jack up this guy. Oh man, so much fun. So you can probably see, at least I think, on my screen at least, I can see the flickering of the frequency of these uh, the LEDs. They operate at 800 hertz, which, oh, interesting enough, I wonder if I go to 800 if we'll see, oh, I don't know, it won't give me a, a smooth 800 balls, that's stupid. Well, anyway, you can see it at uh, both of these. I go even higher, you can see it more. But anyway, that's that. So adding a cap is definitely necessary. Um, I don't know if I care enough to do a test later uh, to see if the cap is necessary just based on um, the length. Uh, I don't think it's the quality of the cord because this is a uh, phone. I mean, phone is not the best, but it's good enough to carry voice um, but yeah whatever awesome LEDs these things are dirt dirt cheap um, after I'm done with my project that I'm working on currently I can see myself picking up a whole bunch of these just for future projects because they are so cheap and so smart oh and you can see uh, I'm using an Arduino but there's nothing stopping me from using a DigiSpark or even just that tiny direct. Um, I think I would need a crystal to get the timing with the uh, tiny direct. But anyway, you can see uh, it's things and stuff, focus, words. There we go. So, it's focused enough, I don't care. So, we've got the green is ground, red is 5 volts. And this happy fellow over there uh, is going to pin 6, which is by default what the, uh, the library that I'm using to address these guys is operating at. And on the back of the LED, let's see if we can focus a little bit. Maybe there's a better angle. Okay. Maybe a better angle here. Yeah, slightly better. Yeah, you can kind of see what's going on. So, uh, there's a little white dude uh, underneath two red wires on the left. That is a jumper. Um, the main red wire here is taking 5 volts and going to the bottom left pad, which is, if I remember right, I think that's the chip driver. 
um, the chip needs a separate power source than the LEDs. The LEDs are the, the top middle one. Um, so to jump power between the two, I've just got a little jumper there. It's almost a shame that they didn't make the LED with that jumper to begin with, but I guess uh, the chip can take powers or voltages that's above 5 volts, so maybe if you want to power the chip with 9 or something and the LEDs need less, but it's got a voltage regulator built into it, so I don't, I don't, I don't know, who cares. Um, top right, you can see, is the green Mr. Happy Man's going there. It's ground up to the top right. On the schematic, it's called like VDD, I think. V, no, VSS. VDD is the other one, who cares. Um, also soldered to that is the black wire. Um, red wire is also soldered to the top middle pin. And the yellow pin is, or the, the yellow wire in the back, back there, he is going to boop, 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 the bottom middle pad. Uh, it's kind of hard to see at this angle, but mm, trust me, that's where he's going. Yeah, so um, on top of that, the bottom right pad is the data out, D0, and that's the yellow going to this RJ11 cable. I just cut the green off because I'm not using it. So we've got 5 volts, ground, and signal. And we come over here. Do -do -do -do. Get the same angle on this Jiminy Man's. <laughs> this guy you can see a little better, but unfortunately, there's no good light back here. So, oh cool, the light's actually so bright it comes through a little bit. So you can see the same jumper wire. Uh, focus, yeah. On this guy, it's going from the bottom left to the top middle. Uh, voltage is going to the bottom left. Uh, signal is going to the bottom middle. If I were to jumper or to train another uh, LED off this, it would be to the bottom right pad. The top right pad is ground, and in this case, because of the uh, signal noise, and that's what the decoupling capacitor is, so you don't have a floating ground, um, is taking the signal noise out from uh, the five volts. So it's jumpering between the five volt pad and the ground pad, and it's just, um, uh, 0.1 UF uh, uh, capacitor, but that's it. Super cheap LEDs. I think I paid $17 for 50 of them shipped, and we got two of them working. And to date, I've only killed how many of my graveyard over here? Uh, see now, right? Three. Three have been killed. Maybe killed. Maybe I'll take them apart and see if they've been actually killed, killed. Uh, in the other video, this camera's better. I can zoom and do things. Let's see, yeah, you can see that's how the pads get all janked up and melted. I think it's just because I was soldering at too high of a temperature. But anyway, that's it. Okay, bye.